Very good morning. This is Jyoti from my Department of Biology. Today we want to discuss and we are going to discuss about cell wall of the cell. You know, generally the cell wall of a cell present in plant cells, and these plant cells of our cell wall are made up of cellulose. You know, what is the meaning of cellulose? Generally, it is also known as polysaccharide. In our last week, some of the class we discussed that. Cellulose is a complex sugar, and with that complex sugar, in a plant cell, cell wall is made by cellulose. So, what is the structure of this cell wall? Now we look at. So, generally, if you look at about the cell wall, this is the structure, and it is made up of three layers. How many layers? Three layers. The first layer is known primary cell wall. And the secondary cell wall is a uh, second layer is known secondary cell wall and the third layer is known middle cell middle lamina. So now look at here. Generally, if it is a cell, this is cell membrane is also known plasma membrane. And uh, the gap between these layer is known plasma dismata. And uh, generally, it's known a hole. Generally, to pass the molecules from outside to inside, or inside to outside, there is a for the transportation there is a gap required. That gap is known as plasma dismata. And out of the cell membrane, we find cell wall. This cell wall actually has three layers. See the yellow color from the yellow. This is the first layer, primary layer, primary cell wall, and the secondary cell wall, and uh, middle lamina. Okay, and these primary and secondary cell wall, both of them are made up of cellulose. So the primary cell wall is made up of cellulose and the pectin. Even the secondary cell wall is also made up of hemicellulose and cellulose. What these cellulose and pectin gives? They give a structure and support to the cell. So these two cellulose is a complex sugar. So that complex sugar gives a rigidity, a strongness support to the cell and to the cell wall. And these two cell wall are present out of the cell membrane. Then what about the middle lamella? The middle lamella is present between two cells. Here, see this is one cell and it is another cell. And these two cells are commanded by middle lamella. See? This middle lamina is helping to attach both and it is made up of pectin. Pectin is a glue, like a glue, sticky, will help to attach both layers. Even you see, the primary cell wall also has pectin. This pectin helps to attach with the primary layer with the secondary cell wall. And this cell wall of the cell is attached to another cell. By a middle lamella, which is made up of pectin, and this cell wall generally not only present in plant cells, also present in bacteria, even fungi also. In bacteria, the cell wall which is present known peptidoglycan. In a previous class, I already told you, peptidoglycan is a material of a combination of sugars and uh, amino acids, mean carbohydrates and proteins together combine from peptidoglycan and generally all bacteria cells have uh, cell wall and they are made up of peptidoglycan but mycoplasma, have you heard anywhere this name? yes, you heard this name mycoplasma it is a smallest cell the smallest cell is a mycoplasma it is also known PPLO, pleutonemonia like organism this pleuronemonia like organism lacks cell wall. It doesn't have cell wall. Okay. And when you look about fungal cell wall, any fungi, you take the outer boundary is made up of, the cell wall is made up of chitin. It is a material, chitin. Chitin is a material, is a help to form the cell wall, to frame the cell wall. Okay. So there are how many cell walls here? There are So generally this cell wall actually has three layers I already told you. What is the function of these layers? You know these layers I mean this cell wall gives support to the plant cell, bacteria cell or fungal cell, anything. For any cell the cell wall gives protection. Because see here, the 
cellulose, middle lamina is made up of fatty, which gives support to attach to cells, and uh, this cell wall also gives support and uh, protection, helps in the transportation of materials from outside to inside and inside to outside, and as well as it uh, uh, maintains stubborn pressure, which comes from out inside, and also it helps to store its material. So this is about cell wall. And we look at about cell memory. So here I forgot to tell you uh, this cell wall was actually first discovered by Tabaco in 1665. And uh, this is the only one part known non-living. It is non-living part which is present in our part of the cell. And after that, the parts which are present like cell membrane, cytoplasm, nucleus are leaving. So we will start one by one looking about living part of a cell. So now we need to discuss about cell membrane. Cell membrane is present in any cell. This is a common part for prokaryotes as well as eukaryotes. And this cell membrane generally is composed of proteins, lipids, carbohydrates. Proteins are 60 to 80 percent. Proteins required to frame cell membrane and lipids 20 to 40 percent required and carbohydrates 2 to 10 percent required. And how these uh, materials are arranged? And uh, who said the cell membrane? You know, generally the cell has a cell membrane. You know, the outermost of the cell is a cell membrane. If you imagine this is a cell, this is a cell membrane, which is appearing as a single layer, but actually it is made up of three layers. You know, based on the arrangement of the structure of cell membrane, it is now given with uh, different uh, models. So now I am explaining with the fluid mosaic model, which is very popular, given by Nick Gott Nicholson and Jonathan Singer. These two were the scientists given the model of fluid mosaic of this cell membrane. And this cell membrane generally, I have just saw I told you, it's made up of proteins, lipids, carbohydrates. Then, how they are arranged? They are arranged as a mosaic. Mosaic means different. Different materials are arranged like, see here, this is the part which you are finding, which has a head and tail, is a phospholipid. What it is? Phospholipid. Just you can see here. This is a phospholipid part. I arranged two layers here. Here this is one layer and down another layer. So that this layer is known phospholipid by layer. In this phospholipid by layer, the top head is a phosphate. And the down tail part is a fatty acid lipid. So these phosphate lipid both are joined together, creating a structure known by phospholipid bilayer. In this, the first part, I am going to explain you with the part and function both. So easy. So the upper part is the phosphate. Am I right? This phosphate has a nature to trap oxygen and carbon dioxide. So the oxygen and carbon dioxide is trapped and through this the oxygen and carbon dioxide is diffused inside. And you know the tail part is fatty acids, lipids. First I tell you the character. The password is a hydrophilic which likes water. But the down part which is a tail is a hydrophobic which repels water. So that the water transportation maybe takes place may not be too it. So that it majorly helps to diffuse gases. Oxygen and carbon dioxide gases are diffused through these bypass water layer. And in between we are finding some are in pink color, right? These pink color are the arrangement known proteins. There are different types of proteins here help to frame the structure of cell membrane. So, these proteins are based on the arrangement, adjustment. They are two types. Intrinsic proteins, extrinsic proteins. What are intrinsic proteins? The intrinsic proteins are protruded inside of these bypass molecular layer. So, which are inserted inside? The proteins which are inserted. Sometimes there are to be two columns, edges. Some started to the upper point, down point, they are inserted, penetrated inside into the bypass for the layer. And some of them are present 
over area. Then not a good energy. But when energy is to be passed from inside the material, heavy gradient materials are to be passed from low to high, then the pressure is required. Further pressure comes in the energy which should be utilized. For example, now you touch a hot object. Suddenly your hand should be withdrawn. Me, the information should be, the energy should be pumped, the material should be pumped, the message should be transported from inside to outside. So that the pressure is required more, further pressure, compulsory, the energy is required. When the energy is required, the transportation is known as active transportation. So sometimes the materials are passed inside, sometimes the material passed outside. So based on that, the transportation again has divided into two more types. One is endocytosis. And the one is exocytosis. Endocytosis. For example, you are taking food, you are drinking water. Me, the material is going inside to the cell membrane. Then it is known endocytosis. This endocytosis is also known phagocytosis or pinocytosis. Phago, phagocytosis is taking solid food. Pinocytosis taking liquid food. The kind of intake into the cell is known endocytosis. Then what is exo? Just now I told you, an active. So now impulse. If nervous system should provide information, then you require energy. The kind of and a uh, passing of energy is from passing of transportation is from exocytosis. The impulse should be passed from inside of the cell to outside so that you require energy. So by this way, the transportation takes place through external. So this transportation takes place. Okay. Even in extrinsic also, the materials are pumped outside. So by this way, even here we are finding glycolipid, which has a glucose. Even glycoproteins, they help also in the passage of materials. And uh, next, uh, cholesterol. Cholesterol is a major important thing which gives support and strength. For example, our cell is, our body is to temperature, it's a heavy temperature is present. Then, to control the heavy temperature, this cholesterol becomes a fluid in man. When it is a temperature is too low, it becomes harder. Mean, it helps in a protection and gives a tough and uh, support to the cell. So by this way, cell memory has proteins, lipids, all these will help to pass the material from outside to inside by the process of uh, passive and active. In this, we find osmosis. There is an endosmosis exo. Endo, this osmosis is also known cytosis. Endocytosis material goes inside. Exo which goes outside. Okay. Uh, whether it is a diffusion of gaseous, maybe whether it is a material which are dissolved in water. So by this way, the cell membrane gives support to the animal cell and also protection, protects from different diseases. And it is also known semi-permeable membrane. The very very important point. Uh, semi-permeable means allows only selective particles. Just now I told you. See here, uh, the bypass to liquid layer allows only the selective particles of oxygen and carbon dioxide. And uh, the protein allows the dissolved materials of uh, uh, H2O or uh, glucose or fatty acids, amino acids like that. Only the particle particles are passed through the cell membrane. So that the cell membrane is known semi-permeable membrane. And uh, transportation system, I told you, it helps in the passage of materials from inside to out and the outside to in. So by this way, endoosmosis or exoosmosis, it also known endocytosis or exocytosis. By this way, the cell membrane works. And this cell membrane also known, present out of the cell, so that it is known cell membrane and also known plasma membrane. So today we learn what is cell wall and cell membrane. By the next class, we will know about the remaining parts. Thank you.